Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to repack the, this is a Rectron battery bank. Uh, you can get the Mesa type. Anyway, there are many different brands that use the same battery pack. And I'm going to demonstrate how to refresh your batteries or change the old ones with some new ones. This particular battery bank is connected to this UPS. This is the RCT6000. There is also the RCT 10,000 and here are the model numbers for your reference. Now this is the rack mount battery bank. You can also get the floor standing version which is a bit fatter but in this video I'm going to be reconnecting these battery banks or I will be opening this one up and showing you how to refresh the batteries, take out the old and put in the new. Right, the first thing is to have it facing upwards. As you can see, there's the badge. And there are a couple of screws which I've already removed. Right, in order to get the cover off, as I said, it must be facing up. There's a screw there, there's a screw there, there and there. These are star screws. Then there's a few at the back. There's one, two, three, four, five. Once you've unscrewed those screws, you slide this back a little bit and then you can actually lift this out. Now this cover here, which holds the batteries in place, takes size six little nuts. So I just used my battery operated screwdriver and then I unscrewed one, two, three, four on this side and four on that side. Then you can pull this out and there are the 16 batteries. Now it's very important to put them in in the way they are. So we're just going to match the layout. Now these are specifically made for UPSs. These happen to be the CSB. I think they're nine amp hours and if I flip them over, just remember there is a significant shock hazard here and this is DC, so be very careful here. I'm just flipping these over like that. Right, and I'm going to be replacing it with a gel battery. I'm not promoting brands or anything like that. I have used this. This is an 8 amp hour gel battery. It's much cheaper than this particular model battery. And the difference is the terminals are narrower. I will have to just tighten the terminals, each one of these wires with a pair of pliers but ideally it's best if you can get the correct batteries and then change them for the correct battery so all i'm going to do is i'm going to line up the batteries exactly as i see it here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to shift these up a bit and i'm going to start from this row over here then i'm going to do this row over there then i'll do this row over here and then this row over here and then that would mean I would have changed my 16 batteries. So I'm going to flip these round now. Just be very careful not to touch any of the terminals. So I'm going to start there and move this way so that I don't have to lean over uh, the new part that I've just installed. Now, as I said, the terminal's a little bit smaller, so all I'm going to do is just squash this a little bit. There we go. So there, I've just squashed it a little bit, and then I squish it a little bit down. And it's still pretty tight. Now, the method is positive to negative, positive to negative. So right now, I've pulled out this wire. I know it must be positive to negative, or negative to positive. Right, so that row is done. I just check it. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative of the next row. So now I'm going to change this row. You have the spare batteries waiting to be changed. Right, these two rows have been done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these and then I'll flip all the batteries over. Okay, I'm just going to start here because it's closer and it's easier for me at this point. Right, so it's negative positive or positive negative. And now the final row. Right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a measurement between the 
final negative and the final positive and it should be above 192 volts and there we go 203.6 remember that these batteries are charged so they're all at about 12.5 or maybe even more for example if i just measure one battery 12.7 uh, volts on that battery so if you times that by 12 you're going to get above 190 volts right so all i need to do is flip these and put the covers back on just check that all the wires are attached nicely and then screw everything back in Now I'm just taking a screwdriver and just making sure that all the terminals are seated nicely, all the wires are seated properly. Note that this screwdriver is insulated. Since the threads are sunken in there, what I do is I take a neodymium magnet and I just uh, magnetize the bit. And I just uh, magnetize the bit so that the nut stays inside there. So there I've taken my magnet, I magnetize all the nuts. And what you can also do is just put a bit of uh, sticky putty there uh, to help the nuts stay inside. Right, this is off. I'm now going to take my battery lead. It doesn't matter if you go there or there, they're in parallel. And just plug that in there. And I need to connect the earth to the chassis. There's an earth point over there. Now, if you had more than one battery bank, you would daisy chain them, which means this connector here would go to the next battery bank and the next and so forth. That means you'd have two earth wires over here. Now, I have had poor experience with daisy chaining these uh, these battery banks, they don't last very long. And now I can plug this in over here. I first fasten the earth wire, and now I can fasten the power cord. Right, so the battery bank is now connected. There's a circuit breaker at the back of the battery bank that I now need to lift to put in the on position, and then I just need to configure the UPS to tell it that I have a second battery bank. Right, so what I need to do is I need to press these two buttons at the same time. And then I can scroll up to number 19. Right, so there's number 19. It says uh, I've got seven amp hour batteries and one bank. So I'm just going to say enter. Now, the reason why it says seven amp hours is there isn't an option for eight. You see, it goes straight to nine. So I'm going to leave it at seven because there is a way to deal with that. And then I'm just going to say enter. And then there it's asking me how many banks do I have? And in this case, I've added a bank. I'm only using two banks. Make sure if you are changing batteries, you change batteries at the exact same time. You can't have an old bank and a new bank of batteries. Right, so I've now told it uh, seven amp hour batteries times two. And then I've got the maximum charging current. In this case, I'm going to leave the charging current at 2 amps. The higher the charging current, the faster the batteries degrade, but then the longer it'll take to charge up the batteries. I'd rather go for battery life rather than speed of charge. Number 20 is doing the backup time calculation. And over here, it's set to 1, meaning whatever it calculates the amp hours versus the load, then it will determine how many minutes or hours are left on battery. Now, what you can do is you can derate that, meaning if I reduce that, it will now give a lower backup time. Now, my experience is it's better to derate that, especially for the user. They'll come and look here and it'll say it's got three hours left and actually it's got like two hours and 10 minutes. I've noticed that this is more optimistic. The UPS gives more of an optimistic backup time than a realistic one. But because I've used batteries which were eight amp hours and not seven amp hours, that in itself is a type of derating. So I'm just going to leave this on one. That means that whatever it calculates as the backup time will be the backup time. You could do a test and see how long the UPS stayed online for even when it had the backup time here and then you could derate it if you want. If you derate it, it'll go 90% of whatever it calculated the backup time to be. If you go even less, as your batteries get older every year, you should drop this by about 
20.2 because batteries lose their capacity of uh, depending on how you use them but about 20 percent a year especially with the lead acid batteries so i'm going to just leave this on one for now because i've used uh, bigger capacity batteries than i've told the ups and then all i need to do is say okay and press those two buttons together and there it's already taken the calculation into consideration because i am actually running on battery at the moment and it used to say one hour and 40 minutes and now it's actually gone up to three hours and 10 minutes because it now is calculating with the new battery bank's capacity all right so there you go and thanks for watching and cheers